What's up guys? Wanted to give you this video update of Coda. Um, he's just chilling on his place bed. Gonna take a little nap, so it might be kind of a boring video of watching Coda, but I wanted to kind of talk about some of my, my notes here as you uh, prepare to get both of the dogs home. So I'm gonna do two videos. I'm gonna do this video of just talking, and then my second video of showing off all of his commands and what he can do. Um, and so, this is phase two. So you're, you're about to enter into phase two of training. So what that looks like is um, kind of, we call this the integration period. So, so boot camp is a series of three phases. Phase one is he gets to come live with me like he has and he gets to learn all new kinds of stuff and um, uh, really have a lot more control. He comes when called, he stayed when told to do so, he waits at doors, he has good manners. Um, he's getting better with the crate training. He's doing really good. So all those things um, He has gone through what we call a behavioral and cognitive reset. So that's phase one So he's about done with phase one. He's doing really good. We have a certain relation relationship where he's doing really well for me off leash um, He's doing really great with people. He's uh, become way more social um, he's become way more confident in a lot of things, and so that's really good for him to do so. Even as people come in and out, he's, um, there's somebody walking by, he's staying on his place bed. Lots of really good things happening with Mr. Coda. So I wanted to talk about phase two, integrating this into the home. So 100% supervision is my number one rule. As he comes home, he has an old way of doing things in your house. And so, not that he was always naughty, but he had some naughty tendencies. He had some husky ways about him. And this, this goes with Cassie too. She had some, um, lots of fear and, and things like that. And so 100% supervision when you first bring him home. So what that's gonna look like is he either needs to be A, on a leash with you. So I don't want him left in the backyard unsupervised. I don't want him, um, just stuck in the bathroom where he can destroy things. I don't want him digging in your yard. I want him with you because I want you playing coach. I want you to say, yes, Coda, I like this behavior, keep doing it. Or no, Coda, don't do that anymore. So we play coach with our dogs when we first take them home from boot camp. So on a leash with you. Um, now it might be easier to do the first week of having them home one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe have Cassie in the crate as you're working with Coda and then switch. So they both get some free time out and then bring them together towards the end of the day. We're gonna be get dumping a lot of information on you as far as what to do with the e-collar, what to do with doorbell protocols, what to do with when you're on a walk. And so sometimes as, at least for me, when I'm taking a lot of information in, um, I might just practice it with one dog at a time, do it with the second dog, see what's where they where their strengths are, where I need to work better, and then I'm going to bring them together. So they're doing really great for us together, but I want to see them um, do really good for you. Oh, put a place. Come on, buddy. Place. I'm going to get him back on the bed here. Good boy. Good job. So I want 100% follow through. So if he gets off that bed, I want to be there to guide him back on. So that's the kind of stuff I want you doing as well. We'll talk about that in a minute though. Okay, so second thing, he, if you're not there to be with him, he needs to be in a kennel. He needs to be sleeping in a kennel, in a kennel when you're gone. Okay, so if you don't have time for him at that moment, um, he's gonna be in a crate. Now we're gonna utilize our crate pretty heavily during this phase too. So it might seem really, really structured and, and kind of on doggy lockdown a little bit, but, but that's okay because in phase three, once we get past phase two where they're doing everything they need to be doing, they're listening, phase three is where we can start allowing more freedoms. They get out of the crate more, they get to be um, hanging out a lot more in your house, you, you know, you, less supervision is required because they're being good. Um, but, but this is really a critical period. Okay, the next point is my second rule is 100% follow through. So like right there, when Koto got off the bed, all I did was just follow through. I wanted to make sure I asked you to stay there. I didn't need to get mad. I didn't need to get crazy. I just, oh, place, you know, get him back on the bed, 100% follow through. Um, the third thing is, is I would have Coda, especially feeding in the crate. You could do this with Cassie too. Um, with how adverse he was to the kennel the first little while, I, I wanted to make this a very positive thing for him. And so all of his meals, he gets to go in the crate 
and he loves it. He gets excited. It's dinner time. I'm getting the bowl all ready, and he just kennels up for me, and then I put the kennel in there, and I close the door. Now, when I have two dogs in the house, it makes it easier. That way, I don't have dogs switching from, you know, bowl to bowl or anybody getting upset with the other dog, you know, over, over food and stuff like that. So, so that's really important, too. So those are my three basic rules, 100% supervision, 100% follow through, and feeding in the kennel. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk about the e-collar, and then in my next video we'll go into all of his commands. So this is all the stuff that he knows. I'm going to add one more here on the board. Uh, sorry, you'll have to excuse me as I do this. Um, this is also another one he knows. He knows the word kennel. Okay, so this is Coda's vocabulary. Okay, so with the e-collar, I always give them an opportunity. So I give them one freebie. So what I mean by that is the first time I say Coda Kennel or Coda Place or whatever, I'm not using the e-collar. They get an opportunity to do the behavior. I only give them one free command though because I don't want him to learn to tune me out. I wanna go back to my second rule over here, 100% follow through. So what I'll do is, <clears throat> Like for example, the kennel, we'll say code a kennel, give him that opportunity. If he doesn't kennel, I'm gonna hold down the e-collar and, and, and guide him back in. So let me talk about these two areas here. I have my little chart. So anytime Coda needs to move, that is a motion command. He needs to move from A to B. I'm going to hold down the button on the e-collar. This is going to send a continuous stim on the e-collar because he needs to move in order to resolve that. So for kennel, for coming back to you, for healing. Healing is walking next to you. Coda's on the left side, Cassie's on the right side. Place command, so he got off the place bed and I needed to get him back on the place bed and so he needed to move his body onto the place bed. That's a motion command, okay? And the reason why I'm giving you all this information now is because it's a lot to digest. And then when you come in for your training session, um, you'll kind of have this in your in the back of your mind and, and it'll make more sense when you actually are working and stuff with him so okay so the second thing is a non motion so this will be a tap on the e-collar so sit down and wait he should not be moving so sit he just needs to put his butt down and be where he is down as I want him to lay down all the way wait I will use for waiting to come out of the crate he should not bust out of the crate before I ask you know when I say wait waiting at doors things like that, um, <clears throat> those are really, really important for him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each command and I'm gonna make a second video. I'm gonna go through each command and show you what this looks like as far as how we use the e-collar, when I'll use it, and I'll have somebody else film me so you can really watch as I'm training. But anyway, talk to you soon.